텐데 From what I can tell, religious beliefs are based solely on personal experiences and authoritative sources. Personal experiences can be anything from seeing a vision, hearing a voice, or observing an event attributed to a deity. An authoritative source refers to any aspect of a belief that is based on what the individual considers as a higher power, such as parents, guardians, or religious leaders, or even sacred texts. Experiential and authoritative origins form a symbiotic relationship for a belief structure. Someone may claim they heard God speaking to them, and they may find that exact same phrasing they heard in one of their holy books. So now they have an authoritative source that verifies their experience. Or perhaps some parents told their child a deity exists, and later that child heard this deity speak to them. So now they have an experience to confirm the words of their parents, Despite the tangled and symbiotic relationships of our sources, I suspect one of them is typically dominant. Determining the dominant source of a belief becomes more difficult the longer we have held that belief. Do I believe God is real based on the experience I had at summer camp last year, or because my parents told me that God is real when I was a child? The primary source of a belief becomes intertwined with experiences and authoritative sources to the point where identifying the dominant source of a belief is nearly impossible. I'm not sure I would have been able to identify the dominant source of my own belief were it not for my time in Bible college. In my reason and religious belief class, the philosophy professor told us that our personal experience is the foundation and strongest defense for Christianity. While I never would have questioned my professor on that topic, I definitely did not agree with his statement. I knew that our personal experiences were not reliable. They were flawed. I knew that innocent men had been imprisoned or worse due to false memories. Additionally, we only had to look at the experiences of those in non-Christian religions claiming to have extravagant visions or experiences. What I did know was that the Bible was the infallible, inerrant, divine word of God. My claim to Christianity was fundamentally based on authority. That is the Bible. I did have many personal experiences of the divine as well, but I knew all of those experiences could have been attributed to other factors such as sleeplessness, heightened emotional states, or trauma. Those experiences would be nothing more than flawed misinterpretations of the world around me were it ever shown that the Bible was not true. What I never thought to ask was, how would I know if the Bible was not true? Would a contradiction in the Bible prove the Bible is false? What if someone could show that some of the biblical prophecies never happened? What if the Bible condoned immoral behavior? What if some of the events depicted in the Bible never occurred? Ironically, I ran into a question along these lines when I was young. I was riding home in a car with my mom and younger brother, and he asked, how can there be two different stories of creation in the Bible? I responded that there are things we do not understand about the Bible. When faced with a biblical contradiction, I immediately dismissed the contradiction. Using this strategy, my claim to biblical authority could never be falsified. If I noticed a contradiction in the Bible, then it was my lack of understanding that caused the contradiction to exist. I had no way to determine if the Bible was not true. That claim to authority was also constantly being reinforced. As I studied the Bible and biblical apologetics, I became more skilled at dismissing these contradictions without evidence or without sufficient justification. It was God's word after all. And it was simply our interpretation of that word that was flawed. By the time I graduated from Bible college, I felt I had satisfying answers to every question about biblical contradiction, biblical prophecies, and biblical morals. If you asked me then how certain I was about my belief in God and Christianity, I would have told you I was 150% confident. There was no doubt in my mind that Jesus came to earth to pay the price for our sins. However, over the next 15 years, surrounded by Christian friends, family, and co-workers, I began to notice issues with my beliefs. I never sought to identify problems in my beliefs. I didn't dive into books written by atheists in an attempt to prove my beliefs wrong. In fact, it was Christians, the church, and even the Bible itself that eventually proved my appeal to authority was gravely mistaken. This video series covers my journey from an evangelical Christian of nearly 40 years to an atheist. I will share with you the deconstruction of my beliefs and the start of my deconversion. 
what I'm calling DECON for short. This video serves as the introduction to the series. In the next video, I explore my Christian origins and personal experiences. From there, I investigate the key factors that tore apart my belief in what I call errors in my Christian reasoning. The eternal error, interpretation error, apologetics error, and the hiddenness error. In the final video, Epilogue, I describe the processes I went through after leaving my faith. I would like to emphasize that what I talk about in these videos are the errors I discovered in my own Christian reasoning. This series is meant to be an examination of my own beliefs and what it took for me to overcome my own cognitive dissonance. In fact, it wasn't until I became an atheist that I realized the potency of my own cognitive dissonance. When we hold a belief that forms an important part of our identity or morality, our minds protect that belief at all costs. Even when we discover evidence contrary to our beliefs, our minds will instinctively protect those beliefs even if we aren't aware we're doing it. I believe we can overcome our own cognitive dissonance if we are willing, although it isn't easy. We have to begin with the possibility that our own position could be incorrect, to honestly evaluate evidence, and to admit when we do not know the answer. It is intimidating to step out into the unknown, especially when it may threaten our own beliefs that shape our identity and morality. I believe this series demonstrates clear examples of my own cognitive dissonance, how my ability to comprehend and process evidence contrary to my own beliefs was obstructed. I made this series in hopes that it would help others carefully re-examine their own personal beliefs and claims. This is my story about leaving religion. This is my story about the deconstruction of my beliefs and my deconversion. This is Decon 1.